Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Chingato's Combat Crew, your one-stop shop for all your combat news. I'm your host, Frank, and I want to welcome back my homie, co-host, Fonzo, fresh back from his trip from Metzgo, using the Coyote to not only sneak back into the States, but also <laughs> sneak into Mexico. My man, how was your trip? How you doing? Man, it was great. It was great. You got to use them Coyotes, man, because you don't, you, know, you don't want people knowing what you're doing, so... Is that you got, like you gotta keep it? You gotta keep it low key. So, for the people that may not know, the coyote is sneaking you in and out of Mexico. Is that like equivalent to like having the VIP hookup at Disneyland? Like they just take you to the front of the line or wherever you want to go? Oh hell yeah, that's what you do, man. You pay the dude. He's like a he's like an underground tourist. You know what I mean? Oh. He just t- <laughs> takes you all the hot spots. All right, all right. Well, yeah. glad you're back, my man, and I don't know if you're ready, but let's give the people out there listening and watching a rundown of some of the stories that we're going to be talking about today. So we got some karate combat news, who's number one talk, one fight night from Friday night, Nate Diaz, Jay Paul, uh, UFC news and rumors, and all kinds of stuff out there, man. So lots and lots of stuff that we got to catch up on. Uh, before we begin, I want to thank everyone out there for listening, everyone out there for watching. Thank you. We appreciate you. If you can give us some feedback on what you like or what you don't like, let us know. Drop a comment. Drop a like if you're watching. Uh, if you want to listen, head over to any streaming platform. Look up Chingasos Combat Crew. If you're listening and you want to catch the video edition of this, head over to our YouTube page at C underscore Combat Crew. Fonzo, you ready to kick this biatch off? Let's go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's kick it off. First story on the docket. Karate Combat is back, my man. And this isn't just a regular Karate Combat event. I don't know if you've heard anything about this, Fonzo. No. Karate Combat Kumite is a new format that they're going to be trying out. And it's going down this Thursday. I believe it's probably going to be on their YouTube page. You might be able to watch for free. Um, but what they're doing, it's kind of like an ultimate fighter season finale in one shot. So all these dudes are not official karate combat fighters, but they're fighting for contracts. Oh, shit. So, so, so same rules. Did they have uh, anything a, leading up to it? They're just people that they pick up? I'm not sure how, if they're scouted out. Maybe these are people that are on the team of other karate combat fighters. Or if it's kind of like ultimate fighter where they kind of just went out and had like uh, tryouts. Or maybe they even did a little bit of tryouts and mixed it up with recruiting. But who knows how these guys got to this point. But on Thursday, it's going to go down. And some of these dogs are going to come out with contracts. So we'll be seeing them again. All right. All right. So yeah, like yeah. Blood, blood sport rules like like fucking Van Dam, like Kumite. Ooh, good question. Well, Boss Rune is involved in this. So you never know. He might throw a curveball at the very end and be like, F it. Throw okay. that third rule out, and here's what we're doing. Glass on the on the on the wraps. Loser dies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But it should be cool, man. Should be cool. Unfortunately, on that same night, you're gonna unless you have dual screens, which is a total possibility, you know. Uh, another event going down on Thursday night. Who's number one main event? Actually, they're not even calling it a main event, but it seems like they have. Three main events on this one. It's Nicholas Marigali taking on Kynan Duarch in a no-gi match. Fion Davies taking on Jasmine Roach. Rocha in a no-gi match as well. And then there's like, uh, not really a tournament, but four other matchups. And these are super duper high-level matchups for uh, Bonzo. Ethan Krellison, B-Team taking on Dante Leon. One of my favorite jujiteros. All right. Uh, and dude, this is like a main event level matchup right here. Felipe Pena taking on Haisam Rita, Nikki Ryan taking on Renee Sosa. That should be a cool matchup. Hopefully, Ryan Nikki comes in uh, healthy so we can see him at his best. And Andrew Tackett taking on Troy Russell. So we haven't heard the entire undercard released yet. So I'm sure we'll hear stuff in the next few days because what they usually do is do uh, prelim matches on YouTube for free. So even if you don't have a low grappling subscription, you should be able to watch the prelims of this and then come back over here and we'll have the updates on the entire card. So my picks for Thursday night, Fonzo. 
All Nicholas, right. I'm going with the upset on this one, dog. I know Nicholas Marigali has been tearing it up, but that's been in the geese scene. He did have a, a nice little matchup with uh, Craig Jones in ADCC last year, and it went quite a while. It did take him a while to sub him, but I think he did sub him. Now, Kynan is on another level, bro. He's not quite at the level of a Gordon Ryan, but he's he's approaching it. He's getting there, and the Nogi game is his thing, dude. He's also good in the Gi, so that would be a really good matchup to see later on down the road, but this is going to be a fireworks matchup for sure, dog. Uh, I'm taking Kynan, going Fion, going Dante Leon. Dante, never pulling guard. I love his style. He just attacks, attacks, attacks. He does like to wrestle, but at times, if he knows that his opponent isn't going to gonna play the wrestling game, he will pull guard just to get the action going. Uh, Kaisum did not look good in his last matchup. I think it was uh, Ultimate fight night invitational or ufc fight pass invitational that he was on and he just didn't look good bro did not look good so i'm going philippe i'm going nikki ryan and then i'm gonna go andrew tackett for show dog all right all right fonzo next story last friday night one fight night had it one fight night 13 event on prime amazon prime i don't think you got to catch any of this did nah, you i know i, I sent i sent you some clips uh, but let's go over this, bro. But before we do, I don't know if you're looking at if you're not if you're not able to watch this right now, uh, head over to our YouTube page again at C underscore combat crew. But we're looking at the card right now and they came up with a fire system, Fonzo. Uh, is that how hot you think the fighters are? It, not only that, but that is okay. also the level of heatness of hotness of the fight itself. So okay. three out of three means you definitely want to go watch this. A one out of three is, hey, this is entertaining. You should definitely watch if you have time. But if you're low on time, three fires, definitely go watch. So, nice. so I, like, I like your system. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to read and understand. So when you watch this, you immediately see Marcus Almeida taking on Umar King. We're going to definitely talk about that. John Lineker taking on Kim Jai Woon. Fire ass fight, bro. Uh, let's go through this real quick. I got the results on the next page. Let's go through it. Uh, the card started off with, I believe, let me see here. Ah, uh, yes, this bottom left-hand fight. It was Ang Orgil Bat Crew taking on John Lo, Mark Sangal. I believe this was like a Mongolian versus Philippines matchup, bro. And John Lo, Mark came out on fire, dude. He was whooping the uh, Ang, Ang, or, Ang Orgil's. But all over the place, dude. But somehow the Mongolian got his act together and in the third round pulled off a killer Kimura, dude. Like pretty much ripped his arm off. So if you want to watch that and you're into subs, definitely gonna want to go was that, watch. Was that a was that a uh, grappling match? No, that was an MMA match. Oh, MMA match. Yeah, it was okay. just MMA. The following matchup was a kickboxing matchup or a Muay Thai match, and okay. it was uh, cities. Gosh, I can't even remember this dude's name. But it was a fire matchup, dude. It ended up going all three rounds. Both dudes were just throwing kicks, throwing bombs. Next fight that I'm going to be going over in a little bit was Ty Rudolo taking on, gosh, what was this guy's name? David Arsenialiv. Sick matchup. Elias Mamoudi taking on Edgar Juarez Tabates in a kickboxing match after that. he uh, Elias ended up winning that by TKO, I believe, early in the first round. Dude, the next matchup we'll be talking about, Umar Kane taking on Marcus Bouchesha, an MMA matchup at the heavyweight division. Dude, that was a good, good effing scrap. Uh, following that, it was a kickboxing matchup between uh, now, two Bush ladies. Really quick, though. Uh, Bouchesha, was he was he a jiu-jitsu just solely before, right? Did he, did, he turn, did he turn to MMA recently? Yes, uh, within like the last three or four years, I believe he's transitioned over to MMA. But before that, you're right, Bonzo. He was a stud in jiu-jitsu. Like yeah, I remember his time, name quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Ten-time, 11-time world jiu-jitsu champion in gi and no gi. Also an ADCC vet, silver medalist, gold medalist. So, yeah, That's he's got cool. a lot of experience. A lot of experience. Uh, the kickboxing matchup that I was talking about was, uh, I think they called this girl, this girl's wonder girl or super girl something like that that's anna drew Jeru taking on laura fernandez that was a three-round battle 
Next fight after that, we're going to be going over John Lineker, Jay Woo Kim. Then, dude, this next one, Sanchez taking on David Kyria. That was a bad fight. Bad, bad fight. Sanchez ended up uh, finishing it in the third round. Dude, I think he broke the dude's arm. Damn. Yeah. With the leg kick, he tried to block it and he just, you know, oh, checked shit. it and just broke his ulnar. Oh, I thought Whatever you were talking this. about like during a, a sub. Like he was. Oh no no! Yeah, that was that was a kick. It was a kickboxing. Damn, that must have been a hell of a kick. Oh, dude, he was hitting it all fight. Like he was just constantly picking at it, picking at it, picking at it. And then, like, once the third round started, you could see he was already carrying it super low. So he, he was just like a sniper. A co-main event was a grappling matchup between Mikey Musumeci taking on Jared Brooks. That was an ass whooping and a half, bro. And main event, Chingis Alizov taking on Marat Gregorian. Dude, this was five rounds of five round dominance, dude. And you, you just saw the difference between both of these guys from the moment the fight started. Like one dude was throwing kicks in fifth gear, and the other guy was throwing kicks in second <laughs> to one. Like you could just see the kicks coming, and the other guy would throw a kick, and his leg would be back before you knew it, and it would be followed up with some hands. He was just Tagging him left and right. Chingy's eventually slowed down as the fight went on, but at the first three rounds, he was just on fire, lighting him up, bro. I'm not going to go over. I don't want to talk about all the fights, just the ones that I think you out there should go and watch or that you should know about. All right, bro. Next matchup was a grappling matchup between Ty Rudolo taking on Dagi Arslanalayev. I hope I'm saying that right. Hopefully he doesn't send a hitman to come get me. But this was jujitsu versus Stambo, <laughs> I believe, bro. And uh, I, oh, I got a clip from this one. And this is kind of like, this is some bullshit, dude. Remember back in the day, I think it was Marillo Bustamante, an early Pride Fighting Championship matchup. And I believe Busta got somebody in a sub, and the guy tapped, but he pretended like he didn't tap, and the ref didn't see it, so the fight continued. And Busta ended up getting the tap again later, but it took him a little bit of time. You remember that? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, vaguely. It was, it's been a long Yeah, that time. was a little, long, long, long time ago, but I think yeah. that also happened to Neil Brennan in Pride Fighting Championships as well. So check this out, bro. Check this out. <laughs> So, did you see that? Yeah. Was that? And he's like, nah, fool. I just, yeah. I, I just spanked you, fool. I was just, you had a luscious ass. <laughs> Clapping them cheeks. <laughs> so let me go back. Let me go back. Look at this. Here's Ty working a leg lock. Yeah. The problem is, and he tapped. He just yeah. slaps him on the butt. Ty lets go, and he's like, no, I didn't tap. So Ty's like, all right, I'm gonna grab your back then, fool. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm grabbing your back and I'm going to choke you the fuck out now. Man, okay. <laughs> Dude, that's some BS, bro. That's That was an obvious tap. You know, so I guess that's what I, that's why you don't let go until the ref says let go. Yeah, yeah. So. That's exactly right. It's still booty, but at the same time, man, I'm mad at it. Like, he ended up with the win. He got a choke. Even more dominant. Now what you want to do? What you want to complain about? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Ty got on the mic, and then he called out Isaac Michelle. And who was the other one he called out? I can't, I'm, I'm totally slipping right now. And I'm, Isaac Michelle's on the brain because that's the matchup I think would be fire, dude. That would be such a fun matchup to watch. Isaac Michelle, formerly of B-Team, now back with New Wave and Gordon and Donaher and all those guys. Yeah, that will be a fire matchup, bro. I want to see that. All right, Fonzo. Next matchup, dude. This is two behe- like look at what look at the pictures that we're looking at, dude. Umar Khan, Umar Kane, I believe is his name. Umar Khan. He is a professional Senegalese wrestler, dude. He's like the real juggernaut from Senegal. You know what? Just by looking at this picture, I'd like to see him against fucking Ngannou. <laughs> dude, two semi trucks. Two semi trucks. Oh like, my god! And dude, lighting. check this out. Umar Kane is a wizard on the ground, bro. Like he might not have subs from everywhere, but you know he's got a guillotine. You know he's got a kimura. He's got the power moves, but the way he moves on top is like a little dude, because. Bushesha, dude, 10-time, 11-time world jiu-jitsu champion, whatever it is, 
He was throwing up subs left and right in the first round, even in the second round. And Umar was able to maneuver his way out of each and every single one by creating a scramble, by jumping over, by doing something that made it super hard for Bouchesha to finish the sub. This was a, like, up, dude. Round one was a war. Like, round one could have easily have been a 10-8. Round two, Bouchesha came back, evened it up a little bit. But, bro, let's just, let me stop talking and let me just show you these clips. Because right. I'm not even doing it justice. This was the first round. Damn, those are some bombs, fool. Wow, dude, they were throwing haymakers, and that was the first round. Bushesha for sure gassed out in that first round, and he took some shots. His face was all swelled up. So he survived that first round, dude. He got mauled. He would try to, like, he would roll, invert, try to take, like, try to create a scramble to get back to his feet. And Umar would just be right there, dude. Instead of, like, being able to press back up and get on his feet, Umar would just be end up in his guard. And he would just drop in him hammers, dude. Yeah. Check out this next clip. This is from the third round. This is almost like, remember that fight with Don Fry and Pride? When they were just, like, <laughs> rock them, stock them robots? Yeah. Bro, check this out. No fucking technique, just swinging. No, just swinging from the hip, bro. <laughs> this is like Toyota, like Toyota Corollas being launched from their hands, dude. <laughs> dude, this is so such a pride fight for sure. Exactly, dude. Like, and it was it was so fun to watch. Like every time they were throwing, you're like, oh shit, oh oh oh, like dude, like car accidents waiting to happen you know what i mean just these near misses and like a, dude there's no technique involved in this this was just <laughs> two dudes trying to smash each other and one of them was a lot better at smashing than the other one so it ended up going all three rounds umar gets the unanimous decision and umar did get a yellow card bro herb dean was watching oh, really? this he was given yeah he was giving he was giving warning throughout the fight because both guys were either grabbing shorts or grabbing a glove or something, but Umar was getting penalized a little bit more. He was definitely getting a lot more warnings than Bushesha. And I think it was in the third round, he got the final the yellow card. So that docked him 20% of his pay. Damn. And then, yeah. And then right after that, he kind of turned up the heat and tried to get the win. Uh, he, so he did get the unanimous decision win and he got a 50 K bonus. So he recouped some of that money back. All right, bro. You remember John Lineker? Former UFC veteran fighter, I think Bang. he had a like a battle with with uh, Demetrius, if I'm not mistaken. But he had some banger fights, dude. He was known for knocking people out. So he's been in one fight night or been one championship for a while now, and he had this matchup against J or Kim J Wung. So it's North Korea versus North Korea, South Korean fighter. Kim Jae Woon taking on John Lineker. John Lineker does have a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but he likes to drop bombs, dude. So this was a third-round banger. Kim came to bang, dude. He wasn't fucking around. He got a lot of takedowns in the first round, was able to control Lineker for like 90% of the round. Lineker ended up creating a scramble or a reversal, ended the round in Kim's guard, trying to rain shots, but I kind of gave the first round to Kim. Second round was more even as Lineker was able to stop the takedowns or when he did get taken down, he was able to pop back up. But the third round, bro, and he almost like waited to the very end. Check out this ending, dude. Oh, shit. Damn. Watch that one more time, dude. Wait, Wait, oh. That left hand. Yeah. That was that was a battle, was bro. Weird. It was a battle. Like he was, was probably gonna go on to maybe get a split decision victory or a unanimous, possibly, depending on who the ref was. But that left hook, 
that drop came on his butt, like sealed the deal, dude. Yeah. I was trying to count how many shots he followed it up. It was like somewhere between seven to nine. Dude, dude the ref, quick. the they ref could have jumped in a lot faster than that, man. But uh, yeah, dude, that I was don't like, think he, I don't think he had the. I didn't have time. Yeah. So these yeah. were, oh, yeah, do you do these guys? I think these guys were bantam weights. So yeah, yeah, it says bantam weight right there. So yeah, super fast. Ref didn't have a lot of time to step in there, and uh, eventually he does. And dude, there was only like not even five seconds left in the fight. So he almost survived. Yeah. Uh, uh, co-main event was Mikey Musumeci taking on the uh, Sambo guy. Oh, not even the Sambo guy. It was Jared Brooks. And Emmett. he's like the flyweight champ of one fight, one championship. And Mikey just had his way with him. Mikey took his back. And that, I don't know what, for whatever reason, the ref stood them up. The ref stood them up and they restarted. And then Mikey ends up getting Will Brooks in a triangle. And he ends up finishing uh, with the arm by arm bar, I believe. Main event, I think I talked a little bit about it already, right? The kickboxing match between uh, Chingis, Alizov, yeah. and Maroc Gregorian. Super one sided, but it was fun to watch if you like watching ass whoopings. So the whole card overall, dude. I would probably give it a, a – I mean, if I'm going to stick to my one out of three scale of, of fire, I would say one and a half maybe. I wouldn't give it a two just because it's not like something you definitely need to go watch. But there are some bangers on there. The Bushesha fight for sure, you got to go watch it, dude. Like if you're going to watch any fight on this card, that's the one you're going to want to go watch. Because Umar Kane dropped the hammer on Bushesha. bushesha has got some takedowns to work on. He's got – his stand-up to work on. Umar Khan, bro, he's a threat. He's a threat in one. And, I, I dude, I, like you said earlier, I would love to see him against Francis. If somehow they were able to cross-promote, you know, PFL versus one, that's a banger fight, dude. Because they're both trucks, man. They're both trucks, bro. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, Fonzo, next story. Last night, your boy, Jay Paul took on our boy Nate Diaz, <laughs> celebrity boxing, and it did not. It went. It, it went basically the way we thought it was going to go, bro. Uh, did you get to watch any highlights of this, or have you read anything about it yet, Fonz? Yeah, actually, I did. I, I watched the highlights. Um, actually, the the zone had some pretty good um, highlights uh, that they that they uploaded um, on YouTube. It was actually pretty good. Um, they showed quite a bit of the fight. Um, throughout the rounds. They didn't show every single round, but they showed maybe like a minute and a half of every round uh, to two minutes of every, uh, of like, like maybe I think I, it was a 10 round fight. I think they showed seven rounds. Oh, that's not bad. So it was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. It gave you an idea of what happened throughout the fight. So, I mean, yeah, it, it was pretty much what we expected, what I expected out of, out of both of them. Um, you know what I mean? Like just, Diaz is always Diaz, dude. That's that's the thing. Like, and they, you know what I mean? Like, he 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 has some successes. Like, he has some pretty good freaking like exchanges, and then he would just lay back. Yes. Like, I never understood that. I never understood why why he chose to do that. And that's, that's like the did. same strategy that he would use in MMA, right? Like, he yeah, he's got, yeah. He's got one speed, he's got one power setting, and it, it's that every time. He's always gonna hit you with threes, 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 like. And when I mean threes, I'm not saying like hooks, but like power level. Like if he's on a power level of one to ten, it seems like all his punches are always the same, right? Yeah. Like he doesn't punch with power. He doesn't punch for speed. He just punches to get it out there. Yeah. And that's what I he mean, did. In, he did. He tried to use that plan, that strategy in boxing. And you can't use that in boxing. The other thing, I mean, it kind of worked for him a little bit. because he At times. Like, yeah, at times, yeah. I think the other the other problem that I had is that he once he once he gets him hurt because he had him hurt a couple times or at least just stunned yeah, a little. You're bit. right. Uh huh. But he never followed through. He'll just stand back and laugh at him, and then and be like, "Oh, what? Come on, you know, why are you running away?" And it's like, "No, nah, you got to chase him down." And he never yeah. did that. But that's that's Nate. You know what I mean? That's his style. So it just it is what it is. Uh, bad man. Yeah. I'm I mean, sure. it, look, and here's the thing: it was entertaining. I was entertained. I was entertained watching it for sure. Watching the highlights. I was, I was very entertained. 
I probably watched like five rounds of it. And then I was just like, it's just too one sided. It was a definite speed advantage. There was a definite size advantage. You know, yeah. you could see that when Jake hit Nate, it backed him up. When yeah. Nate hit Jake, it backed him up a handful of times. But that was it, you know? To me, when I was watching this from the beginning, it just seemed like, like again, going back to jujitsu, like a purple belt going up against a white belt. Like, you know, dude, like, it doesn't matter if this guy takes you down. You're going to be able to get a sweep and get back up. It doesn't matter if the guy takes your back because you're going to peel him off and get back up and reverse it. It doesn't matter if they even get you in a, a, a if they even attempt a submission because you know you're going to be able to stop it because they're a white belt. They're at that level. That's just how Jake seemed the entire fight. Like he knew he was never going to be in trouble and he really wasn't. If you can look yeah. at the scorecards, I got the judges scorecards right there. Uh, Jake Paul ends up winning by unanimous decision and the score, the judges scorecards read 97, 92, 98, 91, 98, 91. What does that tell you? Ass whooping, ass whooping and a half bro. <laughs> from the get go right out the gate. Yeah, there's only a few rounds that Nate actually won. I think two, maybe three. You know what I mean? Um, but other than that, yeah, it was it was all Jake. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, now now I I heard that they've signed or they agreed upon a contract to, to fight in MMA next. <laughs> well, I think that was agreed on when they signed this one. I think yeah. like they signed the contract at the same time. So he, I don't. I mean. He could back out, I guess, if he wants, you know. But the funniest shit, dude, was that fucking Nate tried to go for that guillotine. Like, I know. <laughs> I I saw that. I saw that, and then I saw a quote somewhere that Jake was like, "Oh shit, he really is choking me right now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he went in like he tried to clinch, but he went in too low, and then they, fucking uh, Nate was just like, "Whoa, I got you yeah. there." And he was yeah. just actually. And Dude, he started to crank on it until the referee stepped in. Yeah, like, that was the last round. He wait, At least he waited yeah. until the end for that. But that was what yeah. everybody was waiting to see. <laughs> All right, bro. Next story here I got. This really isn't like – I mean, it's fighter-related, but it's not fight-related. This is more like cheese man. This is like someone stirring the pot, trying to start controversy or trying to start beef where they're – isn't any beef and actually there's more respect than anything what are we talking about talk about ariel helwani getting called out by jamal hill jamal hill had a issue with ariel helwani this last week i don't know if you got to hear the podcast the mma hour fonzo with ariel helwani uh ariel helwani had yuri projaska on as a guest this last week and as you know yuri yeah. was the former light heavyweight champ you know after he got injured, he vacated his belt. Jamal right. ends up being Glover. And, and you know, uh, Jamal, right, same term. thing happened to Jamal. Jamal did the same thing that Yuri did. And they both respected each other. They both are cordial. They both say that they respect what each other has, what each guy has done, you know. So there's really no animosity there. But on the interview, Ariel was kind of like trying to instigate, dude. Like trying to get Yuri to say something about Jamal to create, I don't know, a, a clip to create likes to get just to get stuff going. You know what I mean? And it's kind of messed saying? up. I don't remember what he was saying. He was just trying to bait him, trying to bait okay. him, trying to get him to say things. And the worst part about it is Yuri is not a fluent English speaker. So he doesn't know exactly what he's saying, you know? So maybe what he's saying comes out even more disrespectful than it really is. And Ariel just jumps on it, bro. And so that's tries probably to... why he did it too, though. You know what I mean? Oh, for like, sure. He understood that there's going to be a language barrier. Wasn't oh, quite that... understand. Yeah. He yeah. knows what he's doing, bro. And there's a guy, there's a, there's a YouTuber by the name of MMA guru. And he cut the clips together. If you want, go take a peek at it. It's, he's got like, I don't know, 200,000 views last time I checked on it, but it's like a 15, 20 minute video where the guy goes over each clip, sets it up, lets you know what he's about to do, and then just shows you like, hey, these are the receipts. This is what Jamal is talking about. And I don't know if you remember, dude, but a couple of months ago, I want to say this was like back in May, Ariel Helwani had Chris Weidman on the podcast. Now, Chris Weidman is not the smartest dude on the block. 
you know, and 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 when you hear, I, I got this clip right now. It's like two minutes, three minutes. Hopefully, we don't. YouTube doesn't block it, but uh, check this out, bro. This is Ariel Helwani. To me, it sounds like he's trying to bait Weidman to make him sound dumber. Not only dumber than what he really is, but then at the end, he even goes into as far as saying, like, I know that I'm smarter than him and blah, blah, blah. So check out this clip. Carolinas. Look, there, there's there's wildfires in Quebec coming down here. The air quality, the, the sky is you orange remember when there was those have wildfires in Canada? They've canceled. Yeah, I actually haven't. Oh, it's great. Wow. You don't have any- are we talking about New York, New York City? Or New York are we talking City. about, like, really? The sky is orange. So, so Canada has now started a fire that's Yes. Taking over New York. Yes. That's freaking something else. That's something else. Peaceful Canada. You w- over walk New York. outside. You walk outside and like you can't even breathe. Never, never seen this before. Never experienced this. And yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a new. So right honestly, now. like where you where you're living right now, somewhere in that region, um, yes. you actually go outside right now, you can feel a difference in the air quality. You you feel like you're in a in a in a forest and there's like a fire ten feet away from you. Stop. You have smoke out like in, yes. outside your house. My kids' soccer canceled. What? They called us in the middle and said, you have to come pick up the kids. The sky at 4 o'clock yesterday was completely orange. You've not heard about this? Where what? have you been? I have not. Oh, I don't really watch the news, you know? No, I, I know. I don't we don't watch, need to get into all I that. Yeah, that's yeah, a not, <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to remind you of all the things you've been wrong on. Wow. Wow. Wow, we're gonna get into that. Listen, it's a good thing I have. All the people know where Ariel Wani sits. Listen, it's a good thing I have a couple of masks in my back pocket because of this air situation. I mean, it's saving my life. And you also, you also (laughs) Bud Lights in your back pocket. That's for sure. (laughs) Wait, Bud Lights? What is that? I don't understand that. Oh god. Oh man. Yeah, that's that's enough. Is enough. What's happening with Bud Light? There's more. Yeah. Are you serious? I know what you're doing. You're, you're, this is the top journal that's just coming out. No, I swear. You went and bought Bud Lights from Target. I know you did. What? What is he talking about? Uh, Bud Lights from Target. All right. And you're telling me I don't I got it's I, I feel bad that I don't know that New York is burning right now. Yeah. But you should feel bad that you are clueless on the Bud Light Target thing. Should I look this up? Is this something I should well, lose? You probably to should. I should not look it up. Thank you. <laughs> There's a smart producer in there that actually has some general knowledge of what's going on in this world. I feel like by the way, if there's one thing I should know, your about- news, the news cycle that you're obsessed with that just keeps playing over and over on your feeds doesn't really portray the truth of what's going on in this world. No, I have a well balanced news cycle. By the way, I, f- I feel like we just established who has the well balanced news cycle. My news is about the health. And and the 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 atmosphere and the sky and the air quality. Your news is some bullshit conspiracy. All right, so trolling or not? Yeah, man, he got he, yeah he went fishing. He yeah, went fishing. he did, bro. He did, he did. So it's just that's what he does, dude. When he gets certain people on, he tries to spin it, tries to make them say or do things that put them in weird in precarious positions. You know what I mean? Like just like weird, like. Make like him Borat. look bad. Yeah, exactly, dude. Exactly like that. That's what he does, dude. And he knows what he's doing. It's kind of messed she, up. She's my sister. All right, Fonzo. I'm not sure if you heard, but Kevin Gastelum is going to have to take a knee and skip out on his matchup against Shafka Rachmana. Did you see this? Yeah, yeah. I heard about this. Yeah. I heard about this. I guess he took an elbow in sparring session and he had stitches and then i don't know so he's definitely out shavkat's piss shavkat says hey now you're gonna fight me in abu dhabi i don't know yeah he, i also heard that he was talking shit or shavkat was talking shit because he's like yeah you caught an elbow but you also can't make weight so how convenient yeah, yeah i guess he had been having issues dropping weight in his camp already i don't know how shavkat found out about that does he have a mole over there or was kelvin tweeting about this or oh, what? kelvin was just posting pictures at fucking at crispy cream every night <laughs> that's how he knew he's like you motherfucker it's taco tuesday <laughs> <laughs> so he since he dropped out shavkat's manager is like yo we're moving on uh and we want wonder boy or kamaru and this was Ooh. earlier earlier in the week this was like on Monday or Tuesday. Actually, it says the second. So what was that? Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, that was Wednesday. So his manager again says, hey, we want Kamara Usman or Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Let's go. Let's get this rescheduled. 
unfortunately, the UFC looked at that and they're like, bro, that's a great matchup. Let's go with that. Kamara <laughs> Usman, Savior <laughs> Wonder Boy Thompson in New York City. Uh, Sit down, shop car. We got better plans. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. Dude, I, that's I what... would have, I would have loved to have seen fucking Usman versus Shopcott. I think yes. that, would, that would be better than than Usman versus Wonder. Oh, that would be way better, and that would be like create an instant contender for the title. Like yeah. whoever whoever wins between Leon and Colby, that's who they fight next. The winner of yeah. that matchup. Yeah. Like what is what does this do? Hmm. Mm. It's what if Wonder Boy fine, wins? But it's not. Yeah, yeah. If Wonder Boy wins, does he get a title shot? I don't know. What's his ranking right now? I don't even know what his uh, ranking. I don't is. number know. what five. Uh, let me look it up. Let me see. Wonder Boy, he's seven. seven. Dude, he's All seven. Right. Wonder Boy. Yeah. And what's Kamaru? One. Oh man. Yeah. This All right. So I no guess. Sense. Yeah, I guess, man. That makes no sense. They should have just met. I mean, you don't do. You, Shavkat and one of the number six, six. And seven. yeah. So six and seven would have made more sense, I guess. But I mean, why not Bilal and Kamaru instead? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that makes more sense. That makes more sense. I don't know. What the heck do I know? I'm just doing a podcast. <laughs> so when is that fight? Is that September, October, or no? That's November, no? I think so. I think it's November. Yeah, because right. I think we already got fights all the way through October right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. But that just sounds like fucking the the UFC trolling, freaking shopcast. Yeah, it's too bad, man. <laughs> all right, dude. Next story. I don't know if you heard this. Everyone's thinking that UFC. What is this? Two ninety one, two ninety oh, two ninety three. Main event supposed to be Sean Strickland taking on Israel Adesanya. Everyone thought that's what was gonna make what. Was what was going to make the most sense since DDP is unavailable. But as it turns out, I guess Sean Strickland's been having some visa issues. Yeah. Apparently, he's got a lot of felonies. <laughs> and some of those felonies are making it hard for him to travel across the ocean. But I did read something earlier this morning, dude, that said things are moving along. And it sounds like he's going to be able to make it. Uncle so Dana. we'll see what it is. We'll, I'm sure we'll be hearing stuff in the next coming weeks, and we'll have a main event for UFC 293 because we're getting close, bro. We're getting super close. Yeah. All right, next story, next story. Bro, Adrian Yanez got some matchup against Jonathan Martinez, number 13 versus number 14. Two young up-and-coming Bantamweights, Ready to throw down. Giannis coming in off of his loss against Rob Font, where he got just murked, bro. Remember that? Yeah. And then I believe a Jonathan is coming in off on a like a two-fight winning streak, if I'm not mistaken. But I for sure he's coming in off of a win. So number 13 versus number 14. Two contenders coming in. Somebody's taking an L. We'll see what happens. Who you got in this one, dude? It's early on. Uh, I got Martinez, dude. I think out of all of them, uh, out of both of them here, he he looks a little bit more impressive. But we, I don't know much about these two guys so far. You know, they're still kind of coming up, uh, trying to prove themselves. So I, it's it's it'll be a pickums for me. Uh, yeah, but I, for I don't now, think we I don't think we've seen enough of each guy's game. But as, right. from what we see, from what I've seen from Jonathan, I think he's a little more well rounded. Like, yeah, he can take you down. He can get you on the feet. He's got some subs, and Giannis just drops hammers, bro. He's just got bombs. Yeah. So, but even those right. were neutralized by Font. So yes, yes, he did. Rob Font just beat that ass in that one, man. That was just a veteran taking on a, a, a young line. You know what I mean? That young yeah. line just bit off too much more than he could chew, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, dude. This next matchup. Magomed Ankalaev just got a fight taking on Johnny Walker, and it's going to go down UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi. There's a lot of speculation. Like, this kind of opens up the floodgates, dude, Like because we weren't sure. There was limbo up at the top of the light heavyweight division because, yeah, Jan just lost, you know? So Jan was up there at the top. Magomedov was up. Magomed was there at the top. And then this new guy just came in, Alex Pereira. I don't know if you heard of Infonso. <laughs> so he's crashing the party. But yeah. now, 
now this kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Jamal Hill's out. Uh, Yuri looks like he's fresh and coming back. So we weren't sure. Were we going to see Yuri versus Magomed? Were we going to see Yuri versus Alex? We don't know. But I think this kind of opens the door for Alex now, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think that this this opens the door for Alex. And then maybe Alex and Yuri fight in December or January. Yeah. because Well, right now, I think I'm looking at the rankings. And uh, Alex is ranked number three. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, he so, just took Jan. He took he out Jan. Jan Spahn. Yeah. Yeah. So Jan so. dropped one. Yeah, exactly. So this would be good. So Johnny, uh, Johnny fights uh, Ankaleev. Uh, so Ankaleev is number two right now. So this, if this Ankaleev uh, hangs on to the spot, what does that do? Because Yuri, wh- when is Yuri coming back? Is he, is he he's supposed to, to be back? ready right now already like like within the with uh, he could fight potentially on one of these fights one of these cards i think but he jo- was with jamal hill's out right though jamal hill out for sure he's yeah, gonna out. be gone for so then be, yeah year. so then yuri and alex can fight yeah I, I think i heard like early quarter one possibly for that yeah. one so yeah yuri, that's alex probably gonna fight. go down that'll be the interim and then this would set up a contendership for that yep yep so yeah. It's look, it's starting to I work its way out. It's working its way. It's working its way out. You know, there's yeah. a lot of dust. John Jones left. People we didn't know what was going on. Now the rest of the fighters are starting to make a name for themselves and they're creating contenders and making statements. So whoever wins this, dude, I mean, as long as this is not like another Yom versus Magomed fight, where it's just a like nobody wins. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. But this new Johnny Walker, bro. This new version of him is killer. I'm loving it. He's Making waves. he's got that killer instinct, man. So we'll see. Hopefully, he can keep it on the feet and drop them hammers. Yeah, bro. There's been a lot of talk about this. Who? What the f is going on? Is Connor gonna fight Chandler? Is Connor gonna fight? Who is Connor gonna fight? And uh, Dustin is like shutting that shit down, bro. He's like he needs to pass a drug test. So earlier in the week, I guess he was, or actually he was. On the MMA hour, he was on the same ep- uh, Dustin Poirier was on the same episode as Yuri Projaska, and on there he dropped a, a soundbite and or actually a little quote here, and he says, uh, "This is Dustin Poirier talking about Conor McGregor. He needs to pass a drug test. That's what he needs to do. He needs to pass a drug test, and if we change the rules for him to compete to sell some pay per views, we make a mockery of all this they put in place." So that was Dustin Poirier. Speaking on Conor McGregor, because I believe Ariel asked him if he would be open to a potential matchup against Conor. What do you think, Doc? Should they let Conor fight, or should they make Conor... Should they treat Conor like everybody else? Make him take a drug test, make him wait out the six months? One of the two, man. Either they make him take a drug test now and just follow the rules the way they've been following, or to say, fuck it, you know what? We're not going to do this. No more drug Connor testing. Or anybody, yeah. or anybody else. Yeah, just let it roll. You know what I mean? You yeah. can't have it both ways. Yeah, I agree. I'm with Dustin on this one, man. I think that uh, this is just like social media taking over. You know what I mean? This is the shit talkers yeah. getting to cut the line. This is Jake Paul opening up his mouth, saying things that are not true. You know what I mean? Like, dude, Connor hasn't had a win in how long? Connor That's what I was going to say. Hasn't touched like, the belt since they've changed over to from Reebok. Like, dude, come on. Get some wins under your belt, and then you can start making statements, making demands. Because he's also saying, I don't know if you heard this, he also says his next fight is now going to be against Nate. And he says it's going to be for the BMF. He says something like, don't worry, mate, I'm going to get us that belt. No, bro, no. No, I, I'm not. I'm not down for that. Let's just keep fights the way they're supposed to go. Let the contenders work their way up. Use the rankings. Why do we have the rankings? Why do we have Usada if we're not going to use them? All right. Next story, bro. Conor McGregor again. Damn it, he's like a pulga, bro. We can't get rid of him. It's like a bad rash. Here he is again. So after Justin Gagey shut the lights out on Dustin Poirier last week. He was asked in the press conference. I don't know if you saw the post-fight press conference for UFC 291, Fonzo, but he, I didn't. Justin Gagey was asked if he was interested in fighting uh, Conor McGregor, and he said basically the same thing that Dustin just said. No, nah, I'm not interested in fighting against a cheater. 
I've been natural my whole life. And that's oh, not yes, a, I did see that. That's I not a, saw that clip. That's not a fight that interests me. Well, a few days later, look at what he's saying. He tweeted out, signed the contract, big boy. So now it sounds like he's interested in it. Now he wants the Connor fight. And then oh, Connor says, that payday. Yeah, dude. Or maybe he got to see the numbers. Maybe Dustin sent him a screenshot of the of the uh direct deposit drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I read that uh Dustin Poirier is probably right now the highest paid MMA athlete. That's what's up. Is that like uh from the UFC only or is that because of like no everything everything, everything. okay so this yeah, is like I... PPV this is fucking uh like whatever endorsement deals he's got like he well I mean it all started too with that McGregor fight so that yeah. set him up and then all of a sudden hot like, sauce kicked off yeah yeah and exactly. I think he's got a lick I think he's got a not a not a whiskey but I think it's a Gosh, I forget what it was. He's got some, some sort of spirit. Yeah, some kind of spirit, though. Yeah. So he's doing really well for himself, man. Yeah. So he's so. almost to the point where he doesn't really need to fight because his businesses are doing so well. So he also said on the podcast that he doesn't he doesn't feel that he's big enough to move up to the to welterweight. So he's probably gonna stick around at light. I, there I, was, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was a lot bigger than he was. So apparently he says he walks around like a 180, 170s, high 70s, you know? So he says he hasn't gotten up to like the 190s and 200s in a long, long, long time. And uh, those welterweights are big boys, man. So yeah, probably won't be seen up, up there at all. And with that being said, bro, if the matchup with Connor and Justin Gagey does come out, Vegas already got odds. And Justin's <laughs> coming out as a heavy, heavy favor, bro. I agree. <laughs> Is that guy? Yeah. yeah. Vegas got Justin as a minus 325 favorite with Connor at a plus 250. So those yeah. are the that's the early line, bro. And that's that's how I see it. What's yeah. Justin good at? Leg kicking. What's Connor scared of? Leg kicks, bro. He's gonna get that shit tested. Dude, not only that, but he's you know, Connor's been been uh, rocked a few times and Gaethje got them bombed, so yeah. I mean, he did rock Dustin for a while, a little bit in the first matchup, you know, but yeah. then Dustin in that second round, Dustin just broke his legs off. Yeah. Fuck your legs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fonzo. Last week, I know I sent you this clip, bro. Derek yeah. Lewis, Rogerio, what's this guy's name again? De Lima. Rogerio De Lima. Marcos Rogerio his, De Lima. Or Mar there you go. Marcos Rogerio De Lima took a knee right up the middle from Derek Lewis in like the first. Five, ten seconds of, of the fight. Yeah. And since then, he says he's been having problems, bro. Yeah, fool, you just got fucking kneed in the mouth by a dump truck, bro. <laughs> says his yeah. teeth are all loose. He's having trouble eating, bro. Go, <laughs> go to Jamba Juice. Get that high protein. Get the peanut butter in there. Get some chocolate. Bro, you're going to be on a liquid diet for a while. Go see a dentist. Might have to get some implants. I don't know. That sounds uh, all bad. That does sound all bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's like no fun. No way, dude. No way. All right. That was a quick short story. Next story, bro. Fonzo, did you watch Ultimate Fighter Season 31, Episode 10, bro? It's getting close. Getting close no. to the end. All right. All right. Uh, this one was a little bit better, my man. A little bit better. The fight was good. The fight was a Freaking bloodbath. Uh, it was Brad Kadota, I believe the guy's name is. And I forgot the name of the guy he took on, but they went all three rounds. Kadota ends up getting the unanimous decision. Uh, in this episode, Kadota goes back to Team McGregor because, as you remember, as soon as they started the, sem the semifinals, they were allowed, uh, most of the guys were on Team Chandler. And I think, uh, Connor only had one fighter, so they asked the fighters if anybody would want to switch teams, and Kadota was the only one that switched teams. So he switched over. It ended up working out for him. He was dropping bombs, dude. It was a good fight. There were some takedowns. There was a, lots and lots of bombs. Chandler was complaining that the refs, stole, the judges stole this from his fighter, but eh, it was a pretty good fight, dude. I think they got it right. We move on to okay. the next episode. We're still in this in the semis. 
I forget who's fighting this week, but I think there's only like one or two episodes left. And then we get to the finale pretty soon. All right, dude. This came out earlier in the week. Shatri Sitiadong, I believe he's the CEO of One Championship. He's like the Dana White for One. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. didn't. He did an interview, and he said that he would love to someday cross promote with the UFC. Duh, of course you want to cross promote with the UFC, man. They're the biggest baller on the planet. You know what I mean? You team up with them, your stock's gonna go up too. You know what I mean? You get them yeah. fighters on your show. That's going to pump the ratings up. Uh, but I doubt that will ever happen, man. Back in the day, if you remember, Fonzo, Dana White and the UFC did cross-promote with Pride Fighting Championships. They sent over Chuck Liddell yeah. for one of their GPs, I believe. And when it was time for Pride to send over their fighters, they were like, huh? What? <laughs> and then the UFC yeah. said, fuck you, we're buying your whole company. Yeah, and then a few years later, that's exactly what the UFC did. So I, I don't think that would ever go down. I don't think that the UFC would cross-promote, but the UFC will definitely be interested in raiding the coffers of one and picking up some of their fighters. Now, who are some of those fighters that would be fun to watch in the UFC? I got a list right here, Fonzo, with four of my favorites that I think would be awesome and would make a giant splash in the UFC. I'm talking about Rainier DeRitter, who's an awesome middleweight. Super good grappler, but he's a great MMA fighter. The GOAT, Demetrius Johnson. Dude, it would be killer to have him back in the UFC. And I think, dude, how good would an Alexander Pantoja Demetrius Johnson matchup be? That'd be good. I don't think, see, that's the thing. I don't think one FC would want, would let that go just because that's I think that's they would the be most, up for it, dude. I think, think they would so? be up for that because that, like, I don't think that any of these fighters, I mean, I, I, other fighters I got up here, Stamp Vertex, Anatoly Malikin. Anatoly Malikin is the light heavyweight champ and the heavyweight champ. I know there's been some talk that, hey, maybe he could challenge John at heavyweight. Bro, if you're fighting in light heavyweight and heavyweight, no, you're not going to challenge John. John's going to steamroll that ass. Yeah. But I think that of these four fighters here, the fighter that has the greatest chance of coming in and whooping ass in the UFC is Demetrius. Oh, yeah. I mean, because he's done it before. Yes. But, yeah. But, um, yeah, maybe, man. I'm just going to say, because that's that's one's most dominant champion right now. For sure, yeah. Yeah, that's that's their ace in the hole, man. But right. if, if he's willing to send over fighters, you know what I mean, and he wants to show that one championship can compete, he's going to have to send the best. Because if he sends out some of the lower-tier fighters, they're going to get eaten up, man. And that's something that a lot of people – complain about you know what i mean like i i made a post on reddit a while back or i responded to somebody and i was like hey watch this show it's super good and immediately people latched on and were like they don't even have good mma fighters they're not and they're just, just when you when you compare their level of mma to ufc no they're not on the same level they're different but when you look at one as a yeah. whole just by itself within the matchups the, the fights are awesome they're competitive they know what they're doing over there you know yeah. what I mean? It's like you're not going to – Yeah, and, and that's what you need out of the promotion. Yes. You're not going to race a Ford Escort against a Porsche Carrera. You know what I mean? You're not going to do that. You know what I mean? You're going to get smoked. But if you got another Ford Escort to race against that other Escort, right, now, man, now you got a competitive race. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah not all one championship fighters are going to be able to compete with the UFC fighters, but there's going to be a handful of them. I like how can. you just called Demetrius Johnson a Ford Escort. No, fool. He's a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Who would be a Ford Escort in one championship? I don't know. Um, that would be a that would be fat disrespect, but I don't know. I'd have to look at the roster. I'm sure uh, even the UFC's got some Ford Escorts. You know what I mean? Well, and she was number seven after this. She was number seven. Yeah, now she's so, gonna. Yeah, she's taking Andrade's spot. What was Andrade ranked? Number five. Five. Yeah, so she's taking that yeah. for sure. So welcome to the top five, yes. Tatiana. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, she probably just has one more fight, and then she'll be a contender. Yeah, that's it, man. Can't wait to see what she does next. Well, Fonzo, that's it, bro. That's the last story I got. Thank you, everyone out there, for listening and watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode, and we created an awesome distraction for you. Everyone out there, have a fantastic week. Fonzo, 
anything you want to say for uh let the listeners know or hear or no just uh, good to be back uh good to be back and hope you guys all have a great week uh we'll all talk to you guys later yeah Peace. stay tuned next week another episode and we're also going to have uh what's the next ufc coming up 292 yep yep got gonna start working on ufc 292 parlay super show got that Aljamain sterling and sugar sean o'malley main event coming up bro that's gonna be a good one that's gonna be a banger that's yeah, gonna be a banger for sure all right, everyone, For if you're out there listening or watching, uh, make sure you tune in to the YouTube portion of this video at C underscore Combat Crew. Thank you for listening. We're getting them views up. Thank you. Uh, also, follow us on social media. Uh, if you're a TikToker at C Combat Crew or if you're an Instagrammer at C underscore Combat Crew. Until next week, Combat Crew out, y'all. All right, dog.